Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the class on lid reconstruction, which is primarily for the uh, postgraduates. We have divided the topics into four. The first being eyelid anatomy, which would be covered by Ruhi. Following this presentation would be upper lid reconstruction, lower lid reconstruction, and then complex flaps and graphs. And we'll also have a short quiz. So you all have to listen up. Okay, so let's start, Ruhi. Uh, so good evening, everyone. Let's start with the basic of the eyelid anatomy first. Okay, so eyelids are uh, facial adaptations that are uh, that are there present, which protect and moisten the ocular surfaces. Uh, they are basically developed from the optic cup, the upper. The upper lid develops from the frontonasal folds and the lower lid develops from the maxillary folds. Uh, so initially, uh, there is fusion of the lids at eight weeks of uh, or at 10 weeks of gestation and uh, the margin structures, they develop at uh, three to four months. Uh, this uh, fused structures uh, separate at fifth month of gestation, forming the actual lids. Grossly, uh, the... Uh, position of the lids is that the upper lid is present just one to two uh, millimeters uh, below the superior limbus and the lower lid just touches the inferior limbus. The palpebral fissure height uh, is uh, around eight to 11 mm and the uh, horizontal fissure width is 30 to 32 mm. So these are few uh, gross anatomical positions that are present. That is a superior palpebral sulcus which is uh, present between the crease and the superior orbital margins. Uh, this one, the inferior, the inferior palpebral sulcus here, that is present uh, just inferior to the uh, lower lid margin. Then the uh, nasojugal sulcus and the malar sulcus, which forms the tear troughs. Next, we come to the lid crease. This is uh, another important landmark. Uh, this uh, uh, crease is important as uh, we can better hide the lid crease incisions uh, along the uh, resting skin tension lines and uh, they will uh, be better uh, for an anatomical as well as a cosmetic appearance. Uh, this, lid, this lid creases are formed by fibers of the levator aponeurosis that attach into the skin giving rise to the lid crease. So there are some few variations in the lid crease that we see. The lid crease can be higher in uh, females or uh, uh, as the age progresses or even uh, absent in cases of congenital ptosis. So these are the layers of the eyelid that we will uh, read about uh, starting from the skin up to the conjunctiva. Let's see each one in detail. Before that, the, uh, this is the most um, uh, important anatomical uh, uh, part for the lid reconstruction that is the anterior and the posterior lamella the anterior lamella being formed by the skin and the uh, orbicularis muscle and the posterior lamella here that is formed by the conjunctiva and the tarsus which gives the cartilaginous framework for the uh, reconstruction part later the lid skin is the thinnest skin in the uh, body and uh, it is uh, due to the attenuated dermis. Uh, so this gives us few options for uh, replacement uh, of this lid skin in cases of grafts. Mm. So uh, below this lid skin, there is a uh, very sparse subcutaneous fat, which is uh, almost absent in the pretarsal area. Next is the uh, coming to the muscles. The orbicularis, this is divided into orbital and the palpebral part. Uh, the main supply for the orbicularis is the facial nerve. The orbital part, uh, it originates uh, from the frontal process of maxilla, the orbital process of frontal bone, the medial canthal tendon. Uh, so the uh, orbital part helps in the forceful lid closure. And uh, it, uh, as you can see, it covers around the rim uh, without stopping. And then it inserts just below the, its origin. Next, the uh, the Palpebral part is divided into pretarsal and the preceptal parts. The pretarsal uh, originates from a sup uh, superior, superficial and the deep heads of the uh, medial canthal ligaments. Um, 
the superficial heads overlie the ampulla and uh, cover the canaliculi whereas the deep heads these the deep heads are uh, that one is the honors muscle the honors muscles are uh, they insert on the posterior lacrimal crest and the lacrimal fascia small part of uh, pretarsal component is a, a muscle of riolan which is uh, separated from the pretarsal part by the eyelash follicles uh, that the muscle of riolan forms the gray line the preceptal part the preceptal is uh, originates from the upper and the lower uh, margins of the medial canthal ligament and it inserts into the lateral uh, palpebral raphe of the zygoma both the preceptal and the pretarsal help in lacrimal drainage system then the pre uh, orbital septum this is the uh, thin uh, fibrous membrane uh, it is a periosteal condensation it attaches around the orbital margins to the uh, arcus marginalis, the la uh, lateral canthal tendon, and the posterior limb of the medial canthal tendon. It fuses with the uh, LPS aponeurosis superiorly and the capsulopalpebral fascia inferiorly. In uh, elderly, it is thin and dehiscent. Good evening. So, uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, one thing we should keep in mind about orbital septum is that whenever we are suturing the eyelid, we shouldn't keep orbital septum in between the sutures because then it will cause lag of thalamus. So this is one important point we should keep in mind. The muscles of restraction. Uh, in the upper lid, we have the levator palpebris superioris, the Muller's muscle. Uh, and in the lower lid, it's analogous capsular palpebral ligament and the inferior tarsal muscles. Coming to the levator palpebral superioris, it uh, originates at the uh, above the annulus of Zin here, above the uh, above the uh, S, along with the S, uh, superior rectus uh, at the lesser wing of sphenoid. Uh, it it has two parts: the muscular part and the aponeurotic part. The muscular part is uh, goes for uh, thirty-five to forty mm, and the aponeurotic part. Uh, goes down vertically for 15 to 20 mm. So uh, the vitus ligament is a uh, fibrous uh, check ligament, and it is uh, against the it helps in the posterior help, helps against the posterior movement of uh, levator. The levator inserts at five insertions, namely the tarsus, skin, uh, forming the uh, as I said previously, forming the crease, the fornix. The medial horn and the lateral horn divides and inserts into the uh, MCT, medial horn, and the posterior lacrimal crest. And the lateral horn further divides the lacrimal gland and inserts into the lateral, uh, lateral orbital tubercle. Uh, the analogous lower lid retractors are the capsulopalpebral fascia. They or, uh, it originates from the Lockwood's ligament, uh, inferior rectus, and the inferior oblique sheath. It is supplied by the sympathetic supply and uh, the inferior tarsal muscle. It is uh, the analog of uh, Muller's. Uh, also, uh, in the upper lid, uh, I, I have not written here, but Muller's is also an important part of the upper lid uh, anatomy. It is also supplied by the sympathetic uh, supply. Next, the tarsal plates. They are dense fibrous condensation. Uh, as I said previously, they will uh, provide structural integrity to the lid and also important when we uh, plan any reconstructions further. Uh, so horizontally, they are measured around 25 millimeters and vertically, the upper tarsal plates measure 8 to 12 mm and the lower uh, tarsal plates measure 3.5 to 4 mm. Uh, the tarsal plates carry amoebobian glands. In the upper lid, there are around 25 meibomian glands and the lower lids have around 20 meibomian glands. So one thing again important about the tarsal plate is that since it is providing the structural integrity to the lids, so at least during the reconstruction, whenever we are taking any tarsoconjunctival flap, we should always preserve at least 4 millimeter of tarsal plate for this structural integrity. Please continue. Further, uh, the canthal tendons. They are the ex uh, extensions of the tarsal plate. Uh, so, namely, we have the medial canthal tendon and the lateral canthal tendon. The medial tendon 
is divided into three arms anterior arm uh, posterior arm and the superior arm most important being the posterior arm which provides uh, with the uh, angle of the uh, medial canthus the lateral canthal uh, tendon it originates into the uh, it inserts into the lateral orbital tubercle it divides uh, previously into the sub, uh, two uh, crura that is the superior crest and the inferior crest so the last layer that is the uh, uh, conjunctiva which is the innermost layer it is a, a non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and uh, it pro uh, provides the moist smooth surface for the uh, lids uh, for the the lids have few glands uh, that is the uh, the mebumen glands previously that namely the mebumen glands glands of zeis mole and the accessory glands uh, so uh, for the arterial supply uh, we have the external and uh, main supply is from the external and the internal carotid artery uh the uh, external carotid artery giving rise to the facial artery which uh, further uh, we have as the angular artery here and um, the uh, internal carotid artery gives rise to the lacrimal frontal and the uh, supraorbital and the uh, supratrochlear uh, arteries and also we have the marginal arcades uh, that are uh, on so the anterior lamella is supplied by the external carotid system and the posterior lamella by the marginal arcades to be precise uh, continue in the face uh, the uh, ves uh, venous supply mainly we uh, it is uh, drained by the facial nerve which comes medially as a angular vein sensory supply is uh, mainly as uh, we all know the motor supply is by the facial and the oculomotor nerves uh and the sensory supply is from the ophthalmic and the uh, maxillary part of the trigeminal nerves and uh, also the uh, sympathetic uh, uh, nerve supply from the superior cervical ganglion lymphatic drainage uh, so lymphatic drainage as is important uh, for uh, you guys that uh, medially and laterally uh, there are two uh, lymphatics that uh, drain Uh, so laterally the preauricular and the medially submandibular divide uh, the superior two third of the lids and the uh, one third of the lid is divided and inferiorly one third of the lid and two third it's just the opposite for uh, superior and inferior uh, so these are my references the further part uh, of the lid reconstruction will be taken up